What's up? Moan Show here today for another session of Get Schooled. Where you been? I saved you a seat. Are you ready? It's time for today's pop quiz. Name one end user benefit of IPTV. Is it A, another acronym to remember? B, I don't know the answer, but B always seems like a safe choice. C, it'll help slow global warming. Or D, the freedom to personalize the viewing experience. Don't know the answer? Don't worry, sit back, relax, it's time to get schooled. Hi, I'm Dave Morphis and I'm here today with Mark Kanata and we're going to talk about IPTV deployments. Mark, we're hearing a lot about IPTV. Um, it seems like, you know, conceptually it's going gangbusters, but I'm sure there are some regulatory and some roadblock issues holding it up globally. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, no, I think that's right. Uh, we, um, first of all, this, we're seeing some great success with uh, IPTV in some parts of the world, and it's mainly to do with uh, things like uh, competitive uh, uh, environment that the operator is operating in, and, and then, as you mentioned, regulatory issues. Uh, but the regulatory uh, issues are uh, a real roadblock in some parts of the world, places like Japan and, uh, and China and uh, in that part of the world where you may not have the same kind of competition that um, you've got in North America, certainly in the United States with cable, but the regulatory environment is, uh, is a real roadblock. So, uh, but I think that that's going to be worked out over time and uh, I think NTT, for instance, has found a way to uh, reach the end user uh, with partnerships and that's the kind of solution that you'll be seeing uh, throughout the rest of the world and I think you'll see IPTV flourish with solutions like that. IPTV gives you two uh, major things as a service provider. One is it's going to provide real differentiation. So well, you've got already a very well established video marketplace. Uh, IPTV promises to provide some real differentiation in that. So it's a a real personalized TV experience uh, where you'll be able to get anything you want anytime you want it uh, and any type of, of content that you want. So it's really an extension of the internet. The second major thing that IPTV provides is the ability to provide a competitive service offering or a competitive video offering with the available existing uh, somewhat inherent narrowband twisted pair infrastructure that uh, that has pro been proliferated throughout the world. So you've got hundreds of millions of these copper pair connections and IPTV enables the owners of those connections, the service providers, to use them to reach the end user uh, with a very competitive um, media rich um, experience uh, and a competitive video offering. So that's why it's ideally suited for uh, a smaller bandwidth or narrow band type of connections but you'll also see IPTV and the functionality and the differentiation that IPTV allows, you will also see that being provided over fiber infrastructures as well. It sounds then like this new service is going to require a lot of bandwidth. Most people are talking 50 to maybe 100 megabits, maybe north of 100 megabits eventually of bandwidth. So there's this sort of uh, need for uh, ubiquitous fiber everywhere or everywhere possible. Is that really what we're seeing globally? I think that's right. I think long term um, the end game is fiber to the premises. Uh, I think you don't get much disagreement when you talk about the need for fiber that getting fiber all the way to that end customer connection is really the end game that everyone shoots for. Now there's only a handful of service providers although some of them are very large but there's a handful of service providers that are actually doing that today and the, the likes of Verizon and NNTT in Japan uh, and the rest are somewhere in between. The rest all realize that fiber optics has essentially unlimited bandwidth carrying capacity and the sooner that they can get as much of this fiber optic uh, capacity and capability and media uh, as close to the end user as possible, the better off they're going to be. So they build the network uh, one time and it lasts for as long as possible. Mark, let's talk a little bit more about the differentiation. You mentioned that a second ago. You mentioned more personalization and I think it sounds like what we're talking about with IPTV is a different viewing experience, more of a content experience. It's, it's the eye, the internet and IPTV that differentiate it, differentiates yes. it. Oh, exactly. I, uh, 
I like to think of IPTV uh, this way. Uh, if you think about you and your use of the Internet, uh, what you do with the Internet is you use it to get information, you use it to shop, uh, you use it to, to interact with the rest of the world, and you do it at your convenience whenever you're ready to do it, and you have access to information all over the world. And really, IPTV is an extension, an extreme extension of that, um, of that model. IPTV promises to enable you, the user, to watch, and it's, we're talking about video here, or TV services, uh, where the, the ability to watch video from any source and any content anytime you want it. That's the ex extreme example uh, of what IPTV will enable uh, ultimately is, uh, is that freedom to personalize your viewing experience uh, to watch whatever you want whenever, uh, whenever you want to do it. Mark, you've talked about a couple of different infrastructures, fiber to the node, fiber to the curb, fiber to the home, um, with regard to delivering IPTV. What's Telabs doing in any or all of those? Uh, one of our key objectives is to help our customers, the service providers, evolve those networks to support the functionality and the IPTV services that we've been talking about. And so as part of that effort, we have just recently introduced a product called the 1134 multi-service access platform. It has the capability in a very compact amount of space to provide IPTV over both fiber and copper infrastructures. Uh, it, it's uh, larger sibling, the Telabs 1150 multi-service access platform has also been released and that's in deployment by uh, major carriers. Uh, and furthermore, we have a service-aware uh, optical line terminal and fiber to the premises system uh, called the Telabs 8865. And then furthermore, in the core of the network, to uh, cost-effectively and efficiently manage the high-end, uh, high high-bandwidth traffic uh, from uh, each node point, uh, the end offices, is our Telab 7100. Uh, dense wave division multiplexer, reconfigurable optical ad drop multiplexer, the Rotom technology, uh, which has also been selected and then being deployed by some of the major service providers throughout the world. So Telabs is helping realize this vision of uh, connected world, very rich media experience, including IPTV, uh, both with the infrastructure access solutions and then being able to handle the, uh, the uh, bandwidth in the core of the network with our Rotom and, uh, and other optical dense wave division uh, multiplexing technologies. One of the things about IPTV is it seems like it's sort of both a, a proactive and reactive approach in the sense that there are user drivers definitely driving the need for IPTV, but there are also, also probably some defensive or competitive reasons why service providers need to deploy. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, there are definite um, um, defensive reasons why a service provider uh, is it must consider providing video services. Uh, in in uh, the United States, for instance, it is very commonplace for the cable operator to uh, provide voice services. Voice is becoming a commodity, and so to survive as a service provider, you not only have to provide you know, your, your core uh, services as a telco, as, as telephony and high-speed data, but video now must be part of the service set in order to uh, survive and increase your average revenue per user, ARPU, and so forth. Cable operators uh, already have an inherently broadband infrastructure. They are in the process of adding voice to their network, uh, so they're also uh, very far along in providing the triple play services. So from a, a defensive, competitive posture, it's, it's necessary uh, to uh, provide you know, IPTV services. Now, in some parts of the world, IPTV is provided as an offensive uh, measure as well, and that's the ability to increase your average revenue per user in areas where uh, you don't really have competitive, uh, as big of a competitive situation on your voice and your high-speed data traffic. Countries such as Spain and Italy and China, for instance, where uh, satellite, uh, satellite service in China is, is uh, not uh, popular or being deployed, um, IPTV offers an opportunity to expand your revenue stream uh, with the provision of video services in addition to the narrowband voice and the high-speed data. So it's both a defensive and an offensive um, strategy that the service provider uses. And the bottom line is that to survive uh, as a service provider in the wireline service provider business, 
the triple play is, is, a, is a necessary uh, component that you must be able to offer. Don't you love being the first one to finish the quiz? You must be doing your homework. The correct answer is D, the freedom to personalize your viewing experience to watch whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want. If you missed the answer, your homework is to download the cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. Come back tomorrow. You can watch me whenever you want, however you want, wherever you want.